call him Shorty, but his name is Sidney Foley. So y'all be in prayer for Sidney. Yeah. Shorty. Shorty. He's going to put it on us today. Amen. 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 We'll receive a special blessing from it today. You may ask how I got the name Shorty until I got out of high school I was short and chubby and my mother told me one day she said when are you going to grow up <laughs> so here I am <laughs> but I've I've had that name and uh, it just stuck with me and uh, I guess it's okay <laughs> They call me for supper, they call me Shorty. <laughs> I guess they call me my other name. That's what mother would call me sometimes when, and use the middle name, and you know what that meant. Yeah, when she humble. used your first name and your middle name, you know something was fixing to happen. Yeah. In trouble. <laughs> In trouble. Yeah, I came from a family of six kids. I was the fourth. And there was always trouble between somebody. I don't think we could say that they we we were raised in a family that never had conflict because there's always somebody at, at somebody else's throat all the time. Yeah, and me being in the middle. I had to either go with this little group or I had to go with the bigger group. So, anyhow, that's that's where we're at. You always got the knots on your head. If you didn't go with the right one, you got bangs on the head if you went with the little one. So. My question is today, and we'll look at 15th chapter of, uh, of Luke, is... Have you ever been a prodigal child? Have you ever been a child that seemed like just gets in trouble? And I knew when when my dad would take that belt and you could hear it slapping through those hoops on your your <laughs> pants that something was fixing to take place. Amen. He said, Prodigal child, you're fixing to get it. And I knew that I was going to get it or somebody was going to get it. So you walked around the house on, like on eggshells so you didn't you know, create no problem. But growing up, I was a prodigal child. I don't think I ever done anything bad other than stick to go across the fence and steal some apples or apricots or whatever he had growing. Uh, to me, that wasn't stealing. I was just feeling my hunger. Amen. You know? But the day we got caught, it was different. <laughs> you know? It was something then that become a prodigal. You know, I was a, a prodigal child. I've been bad. So, in, in the meantime, you try not to get caught. <laughs> you look around to see what's up. In the 15th chapter of, of Luke, we're going to read about that prodigal child, and then I'm going to put it in West Texas language that you can understand. Some of these new modern versions like I've got here uh, doesn't explain it the way that maybe I was explained to when I was a child. Beginning with the 11th verse, there was a man who had two sons. That's me. I had two sons. And I don't think they were rebellious. They got in a lot of trouble. So I, I kind of fell into, in, into this with my two sons. And occasionally I had to use the old persuader, you know, like most parents did. Uh, to make them realize things wasn't going the way I wanted them to go. Anyhow, he said, there was a man who had two sons. 
the younger said to the father, Father, give me the share of the estates. So he divided his property and, and between them. Not long after that, the younger son got it together. Now, how do you get it together when you know what you're fixing to do? Not long after the younger son got it together, all, got together all he had and set off for a distant country. And there squandered his wealth in wild living. Ever after he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and began to be and he began to be in need. So he went and hired to get himself out to a citizen of the country, who sent him into the field to feed pigs. Now this being a Jewish boy, that wasn't my cup of tea. He thought no, but it said that he would begin to be in need. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave anything to him. Then he came to his senses. Now, how long does you have to be a prodigal son till you come to your senses? Amen. Depends on what you're getting across the backside. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. He came to his senses and said, How many of my father's hired servants has food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. Now he knew that there was a heaven. First of all, he said, I have sinned against heaven. So he knew that there was one. He said, I'll go back to my father and I'll say, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was yet still a long ways off, the father saw him and, filled, and, and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and blessed him and kissed him. The son said to his, to his father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time, Lord, when uh, you punished us for being the prodigal, the prodigal son. And Lord, for the times that we've done wrong and done uh, things against other people, we ask, Lord, for forgiveness. Lord, just be with me. Continue to bless as only you can. I we'll ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, the father, the two boys was out in the field of working. And the younger one, he decided that, you know, this old farm life is not too good for me. I was raised on a farm, and at the crack of dawn, Dad had to sit with that, with that funny looking thing's got the bend on the end of it that you, you, know, <laughs> you got one of them out in the little field. Well, probably this second son got out there and he decided, I'm tired of this. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to my pop, and I'm going to say, Pop, I want my half of the estate. Now, that's something my kids hadn't asked me for, my half of my estate. So they both got more than I've got. So I should ask them, maybe. Okay. He said, Pop, I want you to give me my half of the estate. Pop talked on it for a minute and he said, Now, what is wrong with this boy? Has he been standing out in that field in the sun too long? Praise the Lord. Yeah, he said, Have you been standing out there? So he gave him his and he put it in his pocket. He got here a Walmart sack. He put his clothes in it. He tied it on the end of a stick, hung it over his shoulder. And now he's headed down the road. He said, where am I going to go first? 
he won't, and he won't, and he won't, until he topped a little hill and he could see some lights down below. He said, well, there's lights. I'm going to stop there. Well, as he got closer to it, he seen a sign out there that said, used cars. He said, well, if I get me a car, I don't have to walk. <laughs> you know, Jesus didn't have a car. He walked. He wore his sandals out. But he said, I'll get me a car, and I'll tell you what I'll do. The salesman said, okay, what do you want? He said, just a car. Until he looked across the way, I didn't see this 1957 Chevrolet with <laughs> flipper hubcap, a convertible with red interior. He said, I want that one. <coughs> I want that one. It's got a radio in it, and I can turn it up loud, and girls can hear it. <laughs> you know, see, my girls are enjoy loud music, or it draws them to you. So the salesman says, well, maybe I can work a deal with you. You make a down payment on it and you can drive off in this new car. Okay, I did. I got my clothes, I threw them in the back seat that had that stick on that Walmart sack. And he take off. It wasn't long till he could see some more lights up ahead of him. He says, now, that's where I want to stay. I'm going to crank this radio up. I'm going to get loud music, and I'm going to let the girls hear it. They're going to see me in this red interior car with flipper hubcaps and, you know, everything about it. A hot rod car. I remember the first 57 Chevrolet I drove with that 350 engine or whatever it was. I was working for a guy on the farm. He said, I need you to go to town. I like to hear those back wheels squeal. <laughs> you know? And it was coming out of his house, and I didn't realize it then I was leaving black marks where he could see <laughs> what I had done. But he got to town, and he began to squiddle his, what, his uh, wealth that his daddy had gave him. And he says, you know, I like this life. But you know, the Lord is still in control. He knows what that boy was going to do before he ever started doing it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He knows that what we do, that he, he knows what we're going to do before we ever think about doing it ourselves. Amen. Amen. So he began to, whatever they do in these honky-tonk places, buy the goods, like I watch on TV, they're always in this, this tavern or bar or whatever it is, having a good time playing jack or poker or whatever they're playing. That's what I kind of imagined in my mind that was going on there. So he began to spend his money. All the girls like for you to spend money on them. Even today, they like to be able to spend money. That's you know, right. If you go out to eat, you pay for the lunch. Most of the time. Don't they, Jan? Okay. <laughs> but he began to, to spend his money wisely, he said. Maybe I'm just going to spend a little of it. Well, he got tired of that. He reached in his pocket to get more money. There was nothing there. He had done spent what he had, father had gave him. And he said, now what am I going to do? The salesman came by and says, uh, Sonny boy, you didn't make a payment on that car. I'm going to take it back. He said, what do you mean take it back? He said, repossess it. You, you're no longer going to have a car. So he did, and his clothes were still in the back seat of the car. So he said, now what will I do? What will I do? No money, no car, no shoes. I 
done wore my shoes out. So he says, I've got to find somebody that will, I can work for. So he goes to the employment agency and says, hey, have we got anything I can do? He said, was you raised on a farm? He said, yeah. He said, well, I don't have anything for you to do. There's a famine in the land and everybody else is working, doing what all they need to do to, to make a living. So he says, okay, thank you, and started to walk out. He said, wait, just a minute. He says, I, I found something here you might be interested in. There's a farmer down here that's got a farm, and he's looking for a hired servant, a, a person to work. He said, what does it do? He said, it's just farm work. So he went down and asked, him, knocked on the door, and the farmer said, yes. He said, I need somebody to feed my pigs. Well, ding, 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 in the back of his mind, he said, I'm Jewish. I don't like pigs. He says, that's all I got. Take it or leave it. He said, well, I can't find nothing else. I'll, I will do it. Feed the pigs, clean the pans, whatever needs to be done. You know, I've been in that situation myself. We... Mother and dad, I never did have to because I was too slow, milked cows. And we'd separate the cows, milk through the crank separator. That was my job, crank the separator. And then take the milk that was separated and pour it into the pig trough. Well, you know how dumb pigs are. They're, they are next to the dumbest animal. The sheep is the, is the dumbest, you know. But the pig's got his head on the wrong end to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> and he stuck his, he started pouring that milk into his trough, and he stuck his nose under the bucket and flipped it. Well, I was done dressed for school. Guess where it went? Oh, on my pants, down in my shoe. The bus had come in down the road, I can see it. Oh, boo. <laughs> Anyhow, he waited till I could. I at least changed my shoes. But he said, I don't like this job. I'm gonna work just enough to get me some money that I can have something to eat. And then I'm gonna think about what am I gonna do next? He thought and he thought, and he fed them pigs, and he fed them pigs. He said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go up to that farmer up there and I'm gonna tell him that Give me my pay until I'm quitting. I'm quitting this job. So he paid him. He said, now what am I going to do? I got a little money in my pocket. I'm going to see what lies ahead for me. Then he began to think, you know, my dad has servants that eat and have more food than I do. And here I am starving. What am I going to do? Am I going to going to go spend my all the money I got there and buy something to eat? No, he said. I think I'll just go home. You know, when that child of ours rebels and he stays out for the wee hours of the night. You know, when he turned the corner at the house, I knew I could hear the radio. I knew he was coming home. But my wife and I had a a verse that we quote every time our kids was out in running around in the streets. He said, we can be in the for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. You know, he pulled in the driveway. I could hear the lock on the door open. And he door shut in his room. So I knew then it was time I could relax. So he said, I'm going to go back to my father. Because I have seen I'm a prodigal child. I've wandered away. So then, and he said, well, what will I do? I'll tell my dad, don't, don't count me as a son. Don't count me as your son no more. I want to be just your servant. Because they got food to eat and had spare, some to spare. So he began to work, walk home. He didn't have a car. He didn't have a change of clothes. He didn't have no sandals. He was in trouble. 
But then he thought, you know, I have rebelled against God. And he thought, I've wandered far away from God. I'm coming home, Lord. Amen. He came home. He needs to repent of what he'd done. And his Lord said, well, there's joy in heaven over one who repents. Yes, amen. So he repented. His dad could still yet see him looking down that road. Is that my son? He has looked every day for that son till he couldn't find him. Finally, he sees something coming down the road. Is that my son? Got closer and closer. Yes, I believe that's my son. I'm going to run down there. Have my arms pulled around him. I am going to hug him and I'm going to kiss him and I'm going to tell him that I missed him. Praise God. So he did. So the father said, told the servant, he says, bring me the royal uh, robe to put on. He said, the robe is a sort of shows authority. Bring him with a pair of sandals because he had walked barefoot his all the way home. Put a, a ring on his finger. <laughs> and then bring a fatty calf because that's a little party. You know. Amen. Not going to be pork. A little calf. So they did. And the father looked at the son and thanked him for coming home. Proud to see you. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against heaven. Don't make me your son. Let me be your servant. That's all I want to be. You can tell me what to do instead of me trying to tell you what to do. You know? Amen. So he he did. As he went along, the son, other son came by and said, hey, what's all this music that they're having down at the party? He said, well, they're celebrating. Your brother come home. Well, he asked his dad, he said, why did you give him your portion and you've never given me? And I've worked in the field all these years and you've never given me any of my inheritance. Well, he said, I'm not going to go into the party. I'll just go about my way. I'll go do something else. So he did. And the father went out and talked to him. He says, you know, this is your brother. Come in there where he's at. He said, no. He got his hat. He squandered it all. Now he's in it back here begging for more. No, I'm not going in. So he did. He went out and did something on his own. My question to you is, are you still a prodigal child? Are we still looking for the, the Savior that saved us? Are we still looking down that road wanting to be our Savior? As our Sunday school lesson was this morning on uh, heaven, you know, and that should be our ultimate goal as we look down the road. To Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, be looking forward. So we're getting in time, short times like the prodigal son was. He was in short time. He was hungry. Yes. He was very hungry and he couldn't stand to feed those pigs. I said. He said, I'm, I'm not cut out to do this. I'm going to go back to my day. Pop, can I come back home? Pop threw his arm around him and said, yes, you can come back home. I just want to be your servant. No, yes, sir. How long did it take each of us to become what we are after we left the prodigal journey that we was on? I wasn't a rebellious child. I didn't get in a whole lot of trouble in school or at home because I was short and chubby and everybody picked on me. If it had been Today's, you know, bullying would have been what they would call this. Right. But, you know, I decided I, I had met a girl and 
she asked me if I would marry her. I don't. And we ended up getting married. She said, there's one thing that I ask of you before we get married. Will you take me to church? Amen. Will you take me to church? We did for five or six years. I was not saved. I was, I walked the aisle of First Baptist Church Seymour. Nothing happened. I never got in no more trouble. I thought, you know, everything's okay now. I was still that prodigal child. But as I, she and I got together, married, she said, uh, take me to church. Well, I did. The first thing they done when they got in church is stick you in a class teaching five fifth grade boys. And if you've ever had a fifth grade class boys, you become a prodigal <coughs> child. <laughs> <laughs> but we we did. In October 1966, I left that class in the exit building and I went in and called the pastor and I said, I need to talk to you. And in his office, I accepted Jesus Christ as my first Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You know, we just, everything, I'm not going to say it's been rosy. Yeah. You know, I was on this job making 90 cents an hour. But the Lord provided. Amen. The pastor Amen. came by and challenged me one day and he says, I want you to try tithing for one month. I said, I can't. I can't even hardly meet my bill. I'm like that prodigal son. I done spent all on what I had to spend it on. He said, try it. I tried it and I've never failed since. Amen. And Amen. he has blessed tremendously. And I'm proud that I wasn't that prodigal child, son, no more. Praise the Lord. Son, no more. Amen. If we have a time of invitation, I want you to <laughs> think about on your life. Have I confessed everything that I've done wrong? Have I confessed the things that against my family, against my brothers or my sisters? You know, think about those. That's that word, perfect. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word. Lord, I thank so much to me. I pray now that you will be with the invitation. I commit it to you, Lord, knowing your will be done. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There.